All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we have another user submitted topic from a viewer from the channel called Little Nightmare Cosplay. Shout out to them. And they submitted this topic about a shooting that recently happened in Corona, California in a movie theater. Now, this story is pretty new and there seems to be a lot of missing information as investigators are still, well, investigating. So naturally in the coming weeks, I expect to hear more about this. And I'm pretty surprised that this isn't national news, but you know, I guess there's a lot of crazy shit happening every day in this country so this one is kind of being swept under the rug a little bit but in any case the two victims in the situation who got shot is a tiktok star named it's anthony michael i personally never heard of him but i'm pretty sure some of you my viewers have heard of him as he does have about a million followers on tiktok and the other victim who got shot who actually was unfortunately killed is a 18 year old girl named Riley Goodrich. And based on what I was able to see online, it doesn't look like she was an influencer, but she did apparently own her own beauty page on Instagram called Lashed by Rye. So I send my condolences to the family of Riley as you know, she was only 18 and that's an incredibly young age to die at. And although I'm not really religious or anything like that, uh, I send my metaphorical prayers to Anthony Michael as he is on life support right now. And it's not really clear as to if he's gonna make it or not. But in any case, here's what happened. On a late night on July 26, 2021, just 15 minutes before midnight, police were called to the Regal Edwards movie theater in Corona, California by the staff after they found two bodies with gunshot wounds to the back of the heads while conducting their typical walkthrough of cleaning the theater after the movie ended. And like I said before, the victims were later identified as Anthony Barajas, 19, and his new girlfriend, of which he was on his very first date with, Riley Goodrich, who was 18. It does say here that uh, Riley never had a chance. He basically shot her point blank behind her head, and then he shot her boyfriend, Anthony, behind his head. But apparently before the killer was able to point the gun at him and fire, Anthony flinched and changed the position of his head, which changed the trajectory of the bullet and made it go through his eye, which subsequently allowed him to survive the shot. Now, based on my understanding of this entire situation, per the details that are currently available, this was a completely random attack. Police say that the murderer has no connection to either of these teenagers. They also say that this 20 year old guy, Joseph Jimenez, is not in a gang, but police did confirm that the killer did buy a ticket to the movie of which Anthony and Riley were both seeing at the time, which is the new movie, The Forever Purge. And since the killer is of Mexican descent, there's this loose theory around that this may have been a motive for why he may have decided to randomly kill Anthony and Riley because based on this article it says that the movie tells a story of Mexican migrants targeted by vigilantes during an annual US government purge and if you guys don't know what the purge is it's basically a movie where once per year I believe it takes place at night the government makes it completely legal to kill anybody you want for 12 hours and in the movie it's basically a day where you know serial killers rapists sadists and anybody who gets off on killing other people can have the time of their lives without facing legal consequences. But in this latest version of the movie, the creators of the movie decided to ramp up the discussion of political issues to 100% by incorporating themes like immigration, the border wall, class warfare, capitalism's exploitation of hourly workers, the treatment of Native Americans, police abuse of minorities, subtle racism, the rise of white supremacy, and tries to fit all this stuff into an hour and 44 minute long movie. And based on the movie reviews I was able to see from IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and Metacritic, it seemed like a lot of people thought that it was a complete mess. With that being said though, since in the movie, the evil people going around trying to kill everyone were all supposed to be not Nazi white supremacists targeting minorities and Mexicans based on the plot of the movie. The theory is that this somehow gave Joseph Jimenez a motive to buy a ticket to this movie and kill anyone he saw watching it for entertainment. And I know it sounds crazy, but as of right now, there doesn't seem to be any other reason for the targeting of these two teenagers. But the weird thing about this entire situation and this specific detail kind of creeped me out. So the staff of the movie theater found the two bodies with the shots to the back of the head after walking in and trying to clean up the place. They call the police, the police come to the movie theater and 
start their investigation. There were six tickets that had been bought. And assuming everybody showed up to the movie theater, including Anthony, Riley, and the killer, that would leave three other people. And apparently, as far as I can tell, those people were not shot. They weren't killed. And my assumption is that these three other individuals kept on watching the movie after these two teenagers were shot. Now, I really hope there is some kind of update as to who these three other people were and how the hell they didn't hear two gunshots going off in a movie theater. And listen, I understand that some movie theaters can be incredibly loud when they play their movies. And you know, this is an action movie and there must have been a lot of gunshots going off in the movie while playing. So it is entirely possible that the killer decided to shoot both individuals while there must have been a gunfight or shootout scene going on in the movie. But I just find it hard to believe that three other people in the movie theater still wouldn't have been able to differentiate or hear a literal gunshot from a gun happening while they're sitting down watching this movie. And I hope that makes sense as I'm trying to think about it inside my head. It, it just seems entirely bizarre. And it says here in this article that Riley's cousin Ashley told CBS that the family is having trouble believing that the shooting was a random attack, which at this point, I I'm not sure. But they said in a statement, when there's only six people in a movie theater, to me, that's not what I imagine someone that's not going with intentions to kill someone to do. And yeah, like I completely agree. If you're going to go ahead and kill someone, two people in fact, why would you do this while there's other people in a the movie theater who have a high probability of seeing you committing this crime? Unless those people are in on it. But as far as I can tell, those people who were in the movie theater at the time that Anthony and Riley were killed have no connection to this crime. So I'm not entirely sure what the hell is going on here. But this situation is incredibly creepy and readers of this story think so too. Someone with the top comment in this article said, how did the four other people, well it's actually three, not hear the gunshot? And then someone below that said silencer and someone else followed up with saying silencers only reduce the sound to about a hundred decibels. And to clear this up, by the way, there's no such thing as a silencer. I know you guys see this stuff all the time in movies and TV shows where there's an agent or some bad guy who's going to assassinate people and he has this little attachment at the end of his gun that magically makes the sound of a gunshot almost impossible to hear. But I'm here to tell you that that is just Hollywood bullshit and there's no such thing as that. But the thing in the movies that people most likely see and are referencing to are suppressors. And if you guys are familiar with guns and suppressors and how they work, you'd know for a fact that they are still loud as hell. So yeah, that's pretty damn loud. And I'm pretty sure anybody within 100 feet should be able to hear that. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some suppressors out there that are so quiet that it almost mimics the actual sound of what it would sound like in Hollywood movies. But the odds of that guy actually being able to bring that into a movie theater seems incredibly low to me. But we do have to keep in mind that this is not the first time that a shooting happened in a movie theater in America. Back in 2012, on July 20th, a mass shooting occurred inside a Century 16 movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. And at the time, I was like 14, and I remember it being all over the national news, and it was crazy since The Dark Knight was playing in the movie theaters at the time. And this is how the killer on that day pulled up to the movie theater looking with his orange hair, you know, almost as if he could have been a villain straight out of the Batman universe. And unfortunately, 12 people died on that day, and... On Google, you can see the local law enforcement took pictures showcasing the trajectory of the bullets as they were being fired into the crowd by the psychotic killer. Honestly, the scene is very tragic and had actually scared quite a few people away from seeing movies in the movie theaters for a long time. And I only bring that up not to scare any of you guys watching this video right now, but just to point out the fact that these things are entirely possible. Although extremely rare, it is entirely possible. Whoever was in the movie theater with these two teenagers may or may not have heard the gunshots due to any one of a thousand variables that may have took place at the time. But yeah, I will reiterate that this entire situation is incredibly creepy and bizarre. Fortunately though, the killer, Joseph Jimenez, 19, was arrested on the very next day after a witness statement connected him to the shooting. Local police officers were issued a warrant for a residence on the 19,000 block of Envoy in El Cerrito, Corona, California, where they say the killer was arrested at around 8 p.m. on Tuesday night. Officers discovered a firearm and additional evidence related to the crime scene at his residence. And based on statements obtained by law enforcement at this time, there doesn't seem to be any solid motive 
for the attack and as of right now it is looking to be completely unprovoked now the location of his arrest didn't take place at his house but at another location nearby in corona california jimenez was booked on charges of murder attempted murder and robbery on july 28th he was booked at riverside presley detention center and is being held on two million dollars bail according to police reports so we all already know that this guy is not going to be paying that as it would cost him upwards of two hundred thousand dollars but yeah as of right now that seems to be all the info that is available on the internet i'm pretty sure the police have more obviously but it has not been released to the public yet but yeah all this is incredibly tragic honestly you can't even go to the movies now without fearing for your life like, I know these things don't happen all the time. Obviously, it's incredibly rare, but it's just like every day you step outside your house is as if you're gambling with your life. But in any case, there was a GoFundMe set up for both Riley and Anthony, and the goal has been met for both. But if any of you, my viewers, want to go ahead and donate to their, um, I believe, the funeral cost and helping both families out with any other expenses that they may need help with, you can go ahead and donate by using the links down below in the description. But in any case, thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe out there.